Radio 4. It's five past seven, and you need hold your breath no longer, because it's time to go to Ambridge. Jack is playing host to a very special guest. There's no need to be shy with Mr. Wogan. He hasn't got the cameras with him, you know. <laughs> You're not going to be on television. Well, not just now, anyway. Hello, Mrs. Forrest. Lovely to meet you. They've been telling me how much work you've been doing for the festival. How do you do, Mr. Wogan? Well, <laughs> pulling the devil be the tail. I'm delighted to be in Ambridge. Well, I'm ever so sorry, but I'm just about speechless. I just can't believe that you're really here at last and actually talking to me, Prue Forrest. Well, no, I could say the same thing. What? Terry Wogan, nearly speechless. Oh, that's a good one, honey. Uh, no, it was the believing bit I was referring to. Oh. Whatever do you mean? Oh, you put it this way. If someone had told me last week that I'd be in Ambridge and actually talking to someone called Mrs. Prue Forrest, I don't think I'd have believed it. Oh, really? No, I promise you. Oh, well, that does make me feel better. Oh, I'm ever so glad about that. Perhaps we can get on with letting Mr. Wogan get settled oh, well, in. I'm sorry, Mr. Woolley. It's just that... Oh, I don't know what I mean. It... Ever so good of you to help us at the festival, it really is. Oh, not at all, sure. The pleasure's mine. Oh, isn't that nice? I think you're even nicer in the flesh than on television. Oh, yeah, oh, I... I just can't get over it. I... It really is lovely to meet you. We don't get many famous people come to these parts. They did have a big singer from the wireless once over at Waterley Cross. Yes, right. He opened our fate and Tom took me to see him. Who would that have been? Oh, it was a long time ago. Oh, oh, I remember. Mr. Young, it was. Oh, you know him, don't you? <laughs> Young? Not Jimmy Young. Yes, that's right. And he said he was a singer. Hmm? And that must have been many moons ago. I do know him, as it happens, though, really. His singing days are more from my father's time. You know? Oh, yes. He'd been much older than you. You know, you get lovelier by the minute, Prue Fox. I uh, don't want to interrupt your walk down memory lane, through, but I think we ought to let Mr. Wogan get to his room now. Oh, well, thank you. And I'll see you later, Mrs. Forrest? Oh, yes. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Uh, this way, then, Mr. Wogan. I've uh, put you in the Royal Garden Suite, of course. The festival will be in full swing tomorrow. Mm. It's a golf tournament, I'll first. I'll kill him! I will! I mean it! It just cannot go on like this. It, it can't. David. Look, Dad, I really Look, have had... David, calm down. I have had enough. Well, what's happened now? I'd better reorganise supper. Would you like me to bring you some sandwiches? Yes, oh, please, ma'am. Would you, Joe? And, David, please try not to get so angry. Try not to... Fine. Right, you tell me off. I know I can do nothing right. Kenton can do nothing wrong. What's he done now? He's only dozed off and wrapped his trailer around a gatepost. Oh, no. He's in a dream world. He's miles away. He never has the vaguest idea where he is or what he's doing. Is the trailer damaged? Well, he and Bert are sorting it out. I suppose there's no real harm done, but I wasn't going to help him. Oh, the sooner I clear off and get to home farm, the better. Is that what you really want? Well, I'm not sure what I really want right now. But for the moment, yes, I think so. But let's not fall out about it, Dad. No need. I know how you feel. I think you're a bit hard on Kent and mine, but uh, that's a different matter. As for looking after home farm, well, I understand. You understand? Really? About me wanting to get out of Brookfield? <laughs> yes, of course I do. I did the same thing myself. My granddad was a bit upset. Well, very upset, really. But it was years before I realised it. He wanted me here. I wanted to work for a bigger, more go-ahead farmer. Fair brother, wasn't it? Yeah. As in Gracie's father. Yeah. So you'd really be quite happy if I went to help Jennifer at home mm. farm? I didn't say I'd be happy. I'd naturally prefer you to stay here. Just as Dad did me, but... I took no notice of him, so I can't expect you to be any different. If you're sure this is what you want, good luck to you. I won't stand in. Oh, I hope you'll be comfortable here, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Terry. Oh, I'm sure I shall, thank you. I'll call this the Royal Garden Suite because Her Royal Highness Princess Margaret nearly slept here, you know. Nearly slept? 
You mean she couldn't quite drop off? Uh, pardon? Oh, oh, yes, yes, I see. Oh, <laughs> very witty. <laughs> Sorry I missed it. <laughs> uh, no, uh, what happened was that she came with my friend Gerald, the Duke of Westminster, you know, to a charity show. Oh, he's Gerald to his friends, is he? Uh, yes. Uh, well, anyway, uh, my chef, a French, you know, Jean-Paul, he's very disappointed you're not dining in the restaurant. Now, well, no, I don't want to appear antisocial, but it can get a bit tricky, eating in public sometimes. Oh, yes, well, I'm sure he understands. And he's done a special meal that you can have here. Oh, that's very kind. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Well, I'll leave you to it, then. Just ring if you want anything. My entire staff is at your disposal. They'll arrange anything at all. Uh, no trouble. Well, that's very kind of you. Good night. Uh, good night. <laughs> uh, Terry. Uh, room service, please. Oh, hello, room service. Yes, this is uh, this is the. The, the Royal Garden Suite, yes. Yes, Wogan. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you are? Oh, good. If I if I could have it now, that would be terrific. No great hurry. No, as soon as you can manage. Yeah, fine, fine. Thank you. Good. Now, that's what I call room service. Come in. Come in. Room. Uh, Mrs. Forrest, what are you doing here? The game I've had getting in here. It's as bad as that place in Moscow, you know, the, oh, the what it called, you know, the Kremlin. No, no. The Kremlin's a road in Belfast. You mean the Kremlin? Oh. Well, it's probably a lot easier to get in there since Glasnost, you know. Well, anyway, I'm here now. No, I can't argue about that. Here you certainly are. Well, look, you'd better come in. What can I do for you? I've got a little present for you. I had a job deciding what to bring, my damson cheese or a pot of my japonica jelly. Well, in the end, I decided on the damson cheese. Well, to be honest, it was Tom that told me to bring that because he reminded me that it was a japonica jelly I gave to Mr Young. You know, the, that one who opened the Waterloo Cross do. Jimmy Young? Oh, yeah. yeah. The japonica jelly. Uh, so that's what happened to his voice. What? <laughs> No, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Oh, well, as he had some of the jelly, I thought you could try my cheese or take it home to your wife as a souvenir of Ambridge. Cheese? Uh, I'm very thoughtful of you. Thank you very much. Oh. Well, it was because of something he said when he was talking to uh, Mrs. Thatcher, it was, on his wireless programme. Uh, she's always on it. Well, she mentioned japonica jelly. Or was it Mr. Heath? No, I don't think she'd mention Mr. Heath. No, no, it was definitely her. At least, I think so. No, maybe it was Mr. Heath. Well, that's a one prime minister's very like another. Well, anyway, that's for you. I won first prize, is that? Well, congratulations, and thank you very much. Helen will be delighted. Now, I hope you don't think I'm being cheeky, but... I really would like to ask your advice. Well, the television's out to declare Rayner, that's me. Well, what can I advise you about? My speech. Gosh, I think your accent's lovely. No, I mean my welcome speech. Oh, oh I see. And who are you welcoming? Well, you, of course. <laughs> so I thought you'd done that already. Oh, no, no. Tomorrow's welcome, the formal one, oh. on the golf course. The golf's a real opening of our festival, and as a secretary, I'm expected to say a few words of welcome. I've jotted down a few ideas, but I'd like your opinion about them being suitable for the occasion. Well, I'll have a look if you like. I I'd said all along that I wouldn't do it. I, I couldn't do it, more like. I couldn't bring myself to say anything, especially with an international celebrity present. But when I met you, well, you were so nice that... You've helped me pluck up my courage. I don't feel tongue-tied anymore. I can't speak after all. And finally, I want to thank Kenton Archer and everyone in this lovely village of ours for all the hard work they've put in over the past few weeks. And to all the celebrities who've given their time to make this the first Ambridge Spring Festival 
the outstanding success that it already is. <laughs> and I'm sure will be for the rest of the week. Of course, I've reserved an especially big thank you for our guest of honour. Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in showing your appreciation of Mr. Terry Wogan? <laughs> Yes, in a minute, Lou. When Terry's finished. Did you say yes? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Mr. Woolley, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, as Honorary Secretary of the Ambridge Spring Festival... Not now, Prue. I would... But you said I should speak now. I meant after Terry's finished. Not in the middle of his speech, for goodness sake. Oh, oh dear, I'm sorry. I... Oh, how dreadful. I've made a terrible fool of myself. Oh, sorry. Shh, Prue, Prue, it's all right now. Oh, that does it. I shan't make my speech. Oh, Mr. Woolley, I'm mortified. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wogan. The first time I tried to speak in public and I made a terrible hash of it. I don't think I'll ever be able to open my mouth again. No, no. Prue, come back. Finally, I'd like to thank Mr. Woolley for his smashing hospitality and congratulate Ambridge on staging such a marvellous festival. Ah, Tom, the very man. Oh, no. I think she's going to lock herself in the ladies. What have you done to drive the good Mrs. Forrest to do that? Uh, oh, Nelson. Hello. What? Well, it's nothing, really. Oh, well, eh... Uh... If you're sure you don't want another shoulder to help bash down the door, perhaps you can give me some help. She'll go into assault now and probably won't talk to me for days. So this isn't a good moment to mention the treasure hunt. Well, aren't you got that sorted out? Mm, more or less. Uh, don't panic. Oh, I don't know why I let myself get talked into this in the first place. But I'm having second thoughts about one of the clues. I think I may be playing a little dangerously. Well, we don't want no accidents. Uh, precisely. If I swear you to secrecy, will you give me your expert advice? Oh, what about? Gamekeeping? Uh, no. Bells. Ah, now you're talking. Not a word to a soul. But would it be feasible to have one of the clues in the belfry attached to one of the bells, say, or one of the bell ropes? Oh, dear. Oh, I'm afraid not, Nelson. It's too dangerous, you see. We all just keeps it locked. Hmm, I see. Well, for once in my life, I shall err on the side of caution. Back to the drawing board, then. Say, Mimi. Well, I found them for you. And the headscarf. What's all this, Christine? Well, I couldn't find mine Shh. and... Let's show her. Now, just let me clip on the earrings. Oh, sorry. Mind. There we are. And tuck your hand inside the headscarf. Now, Mummy, yeah, do. I've had it done special. Hang on. There we are. Ta-ra! Gypsy Rose Perkins, fortune teller extraordinaire. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> you look every inch a gypsy. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure as I want to look like one of them. Thank you very much. Oh, do it. It's quite a transformation. That'll be one in the eye for Linda Snell. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Uh, would you like a cuppa? Oh, love one. No, don't get up. I'll help myself. It's taken me ages to come through the village. Crowds of people, just like Jubilee Day. We thought the celebrity golf match would draw the crowds. Yeah, I'm sure it has. But the folks seem interested in all the other things. Even Joe Grundy's wildflowers. Oh, don't talk to me about him. Little Hitler, that's what he is. I'll say that for your Jack. He had his faults, many of them. But bossiness wasn't one of them. No, it wasn't. But we're not talking about Jack. And I could say the same for Mr. Gabriel. Rest his soul. He may have been a handful, and you never knew what he'd get up to next, but he was never like Joe Grundy. You never listen, do you, Mum? All that was wrong with Jack was that he could have been a bit more, oh, you know, assertive. And not so easily led. Not so easily led to the bottle. Ooh, that's not very charitable. Anyway, lots of people seek refuge in the bottle, but if people are supportive, they can get over it. Like your George, yes. Poor Jack. He might have been weak and infuriating and unpredictable. But he was also great fun most of the time. 
He was so good with the children. Mm. I remember when Tony was born, Jack said to me, aren't we clever, you and I? <laughs> he was so proud. He went round the house muttering, Anthony William Daniel to himself over and over. Oh, I haven't heard Tony call that for ages. Look, don't worry about Kenton. Oh, but I do. He did say he didn't want to be disturbed, so don't disturb him. But what if it's his old trouble again? I think it is. What? <laughs> no, not that glandular business. I meant his really old complaint, idolitis. That's not fair. I suppose not. I think you're jealous. You're right, I am. I always wanted to be the black sheep of the family. And then Kenton comes home from sea and beats me to it. I meant jealous of his success. Success? What success? You know, Mum, if you ask me, he could be heading for trouble. You do realise, don't you, if he's prosecuted, he could be sent to prison. Nonsense. I'm sure he's not in that much trouble. You ask Dad. He's worried. Hello, you two. Hello, Shula. Hi, big sister. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, you look tired, Mum. Thanks. I seem to have been on the go for about three weeks. I had to come in and have a sit down. Where's Mark, dear? Oh, he's bumped into David in the yard. He'll be in in a minute, I expect. Oh. How can you bear to be apart so long? There's no need to be rude. Sorry, it's only a joke. Mum, I know your deep freeze is bulging, but... Uh, well, I've gone mad and done lots of baking, and I've brought you some bits and pieces. You must be psychic. I've been so busy with the farm visit, I've hardly had any time for baking. Oh, well, there's a mushroom quiche. Oh, lovely. One of Kenton's favourites. That figures real men don't eat quiche. There you go again, Elizabeth. Would it be difficult for you to say something nice for a change? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks, Rilla. You saved my life. No problem. And you really are all right? Oops, newsflash. Here's the latest news of Shula Hebden and her baby. Mrs Hebden is not, repeat, not pregnant. <sighs> Elizabeth is nothing sacred. How do you know, anyway? Because my big sister told me herself this very day when I asked her to give me a lift. I'm sorry, Shula. You must be getting really fed up. But there's plenty of time. It'll happen. You'll see one of these fine days. Yeah, I hope so. Of course it will. Anyway, what lift? Hmm? Giving you a lift where? To Nigel's. He's opening some vintage champers. It's for a sort of consolation, having to postpone the medieval bash. Oh. So, as I shan't be driving, I can drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, I've just seen the time. Come on, Shula. It's gone a quarter past, and I told Nigel I'd be there by seven at the latest. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Mum. Never mind. Mm. Off you go. <laughs> Whoops! Uh, oh. Sorry, Dad, can't stop. Oh, where's Mark? Um, he, he and David are chatting in the yard. Right, we'll get him. Come on, Shula. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Elizabeth gets worse. Yeah. He said that once about Shula. Yes. What's the matter? You look worried. Kenton's feeling pretty low. He's lying down. Yes, I know. But he'll be all right. Are you sure? Lipa said you were worried about him. Yes, but there's no point in worrying about things you can't control. I just wish I could be as calm as you. Ah, I used not to be. True. <laughs> Remember Mum's old motto? What? Oh, I know the one you mean. The time to be happy is now. Yes, you got it from a calendar. It's a good motto. Sometimes hard to achieve. Yes, I can't say I'm ecstatic at the moment with all we've got to cope with. Brookfield, the family, food and farming year, not to mention the spring festival. Oh, don't forget silaging and shearing. Oh, and... honestly, Phil, is it all worth it? Of course it is. Forget about the minor things. Think about what we have. Shula and Kenton... David and now Elizabeth, all going their own way, but not losing any of the Archer family loyalty. You're right, of course. And at the end of the day, I can honestly say, hand on heart, I wouldn't change a thing. Yes, you're right. We do have a lot to be thankful for. Of course we have. You know, Phil... Now stop it, you old softy. You'll have us both in tears. <laughs> no, I was only going to say... The time to be happy is now. Let's enjoy it. The future can take care of itself.
the 10,000th episode was written by Bruno Milner, with special guest appearances by Judy Dench and Terry Wogan. Technical presentation was by Lynn Bissell, Tim Green, Adam Palmer, Carolyn Davis and Neil Summers, with additional spot effects by Esther Ransom. The production team was Rosemary Watts, Jane Froggart and Joy Tonkin. The agricultural story editor was Anthony Parkin. It was produced and directed by Neil Fraser and edited by John Scottney. <laughs>